is in response to a guy who goes by the username of Once Forgiven Now Free. The first thing I'd like to comment on is his choice of video title. A lot of theists seem to think that atheists are afraid of certain questions. I can't speak for all atheists, but the idea of a question which would actually give me nightmares is ridiculous. You see, I'm not afraid of admitting when I don't know something. Also, the implications of me being wrong about some of my conclusions are intriguing, not terrifying. I don't know if a god created the universe or not. I doubt it, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm confident that the Yahweh character, as portrayed in the Bible, had nothing to do with it, in the same way that I'm confident that he doesn't exist outside the overactive imaginations of believers. It seems to me that the idea of a question being scary says more about the people who come up with video titles like that. It's as if they're scared of the possibility that there may actually be no God outside their brains. Now, let's have a look at the video in question. I want to ask atheists a question. I want you to give me an answer. Okay, fire away. So, here's the question. Was your brain intelligently designed? Now hopefully you figured out that I'm looking for a little more than just a yes or no answer. Obviously, atheists will claim that no, their brain was not intelligently designed. Hold on a second. I don't know whether my brain was designed by an intelligent agent or not. I strongly doubt that it was, because evolutionary theory describes a plausible natural process through which all life, including the human brain, could develop. Obviously, atheists will claim that no, their brain was not intelligently designed. So, doesn't that raise a few red flags for you? Not really. I'm not claiming that intelligent design definitely wasn't involved, in the same way that I don't claim that God, that a God or gods definitely don't exist. There's a couple of other possibilities. It may turn out to be the case that uh, there was a supernatural cause or a God or something which sparked the universe off at the very, very beginning, and then the intervening 13.7 million years were accounted for by natural processes. I don't know. Another possibility, which would uh, explain our brains being created or designed in some way, maybe we were genetically engineered by uh, an alien species which we, from another planet or another star system, which we could know very little or nothing about. You know, there are other possibilities. I mean, if you want to claim that your brain was not intelligently designed, then shouldn't your entire belief system come into question? What you call my belief system is always open to critical examination. Isn't yours? The conclusions I hold are tentative, and if I learn something new which shows that I was wrong about something, then I'll change my mind. This applies regardless of whether our brains were intelligently designed or not. It would seem to me that you would have no reason to trust your own thoughts. One of the things I've learned since abandoning magical thinking is that our brains can easily be tricked into believing falsehoods. To me, there doesn't seem to be a huge difference between what illusionists do and preachers of the Bible. In the case of preachers, I'm pretty sure many of them genuinely believe that the miraculous stories they're recounting to their audience actually happened. But I don't believe it. I cannot believe that if there was a guy called Samson, that he actually lost his superhuman strength simply by having his hair cut while he was asleep. Nor do I believe that Balaam's donkey was able to talk to him. I know too much about vocal cords, hair follicles and the natural world to be able to believe that these supernatural stories ever happened. Like I mentioned before, the conclusions I hold about how the world works are tentative and based on my brain's ability to process and make sense of the data picked up by what I can see, hear, touch, smell and taste. The longer we spend in this world and find that our conclusions make sense, the more confident we can be that they're right. This is the time for atheists to rise and shine, to show all of us Christians why we should take you seriously. Nobody is under any obligation to take atheists seriously. 
atheists are people, just like believers are people. The only thing atheists have in common is they haven't been convinced by the God hypothesis. So the only reason to take anyone at all seriously is to evaluate what they're saying and figure out whether it makes sense or not. You also wanted atheists to show us why your faith is a rational one. Like I said, all atheists are different. I would, however, take issue with your use of the word faith. If we assume that faith is belief without evidence, then it doesn't apply to me. If faith is defined as confidence that the scientific method works, then I'm right there. I think that being scientifically literate helps us to make sense of the world, and as such is the most rational position to hold, or at least strive towards. You also wanted atheists to show us that you can actually defend what you believe. That's one of the main reasons I make videos like this. So what are you going to do with all of these video responses? I'll plan to take the best responses and summarize them in a video where I can critique them and explain why I think the Christian faith can provide a better foundation for logic and rationality than yours can. Good luck with that. Will I be able to do this? Well, that depends on you. It depends if you can give me a good answer or not. I want to know if you can defend your belief system. I can certainly defend what I believe, but I wouldn't call atheism a belief system. It's not as if we insist that the words of Hitchens are inerrant or anything like that. I want to see atheists take the stage and deliver. I want to hear some good answers. Great. It's rare to find Christians who are genuinely curious and even listen to the counter-arguments to theirs. At least, that's been my experience on the internet. I'm looking forward to your answers and hopefully we can all have a good, polite discussion. It would be nice to have an intelligent dialogue you know, where both sides agree that they can't both be right, but they could both be wrong. If my unbelief or my lack of belief is wrong, I want to know about it. Do Christians and other believers feel the same way? Would they want to know if it turned out that they've been chasing a delusion all this time?